Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now I thought what we'd do in this video is uh, go through some of the gameplay that we have with our gaming group uh, when we play the alternate rules of Monopoly that I've shown you guys in a previous video. As you know, I'm, I like board games. I have a small board game collection and we put out a video where I showed you some of the games of my collection maybe monopoly maybe axes and allies diplomacy we had some old school avalon hill games from doom to squad leader and panzer blitz and some of the other board games that we have maybe backgammon chess or whatnot right and then in a subsequent video what we ended up doing was uh, i basically outlined the alternate version Monopoly game that we have, sort of the rapid Monopoly game that we have. And there's a, you know, we go into detail of that, uh, the rules that we sort of come up with and how we end up playing the game, right? But one thing I wanted to do is sort of walk you through the initial start of that game, the gameplay for that, right? How we get the game going. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because over the years I've had a, fair number of people ask me um, what I would do to teach young kids how to do simple math, simple mathematics, maybe addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. And my response in general is the best way to learn mathematics is, is to use mathematics, right? And in whatever it is that you're doing, maybe in your everyday life or maybe in gaming. So what I wanna do is show you the mathematics involved in this alternate version of Monopoly that we have. And there are two videos out there where the first one I show you the board game, my, our, uh, my small board game collection, and then the subsequent video is us going through the Monopoly rules, right? So what we're gonna do right now is go through the initial stage of that Monopoly game that we have. And I do have um, a table out there outlining the, the different funds, how much money uh, we start off with depending on how many players that we have and how much how much money each person gets and how much the property values are and stuff like this, right? So we're basically using the table that we've created for that alternate version of Monopoly to start off the game, okay? And uh, you can take a look at that video and, uh, you know, go into detail of what some of the rules are, but basically the general gist of the game is we deal out the cards instead of going around and buying cards random, right? So everybody starts off with the same number of cards and the cards you start off with, the property cards you start off with is dealt at random, okay? And you know, on that table we have uh, different funds, the different, uh, uh, the different basically stats that we're gonna start off with, um, the rules from two to eight players. But what we're gonna do right now is go through the table for three, four, and five players, because that's usually a number of people that we have. And that'll give you a good idea of how to do the rest of the stuff as well. Well, we'll give you a perfect idea about how to work out the, the numbers and the funds and the properties and how we start off the game for all of the different number of players in this alternate version of the game, okay? So what we end up doing at the beginning is basically shuffling the cards, right? So let me move the chance card and the community cards over here. Throw our dice over here. And all of these cards are basically in order right now, right? And the best way to shuffle cards, okay, is not just sit there and just start off shuffling like this. It's to throw them on the table and shuffle them like this okay and that's definitely the best way if you have a clean deck to shuffle cards maybe just straight up cards poker cards or whatnot or monopoly right so we end up doing this and then we shuffle them uh, with the split deck right so let me do this and then we sort of have to order them right and I'll show you how the shuffle comes out once you do it this way. And you can actually just leave it like that, but we end up, we end up shuffling it as well uh, more. So basically when you do that, things end up being not bad, fairly random, nothing's grouped together, right? Not bad at all when you shuffle the deck like that, right? And it doesn't do as much damage to the cards 
as shuffling like this all right so this is a fantastic exercise if you want to teach someone how to do mental mathematics calculations and how to group things together and once we deal it out you'll get a good feel for this right so we're just going to do this we end up usually putting the the property cards in the middle and we usually roll the cards to see who gets the first card right so let's assume we have three players up right now i'll take the horsey let's bring out a boat and let's grab the car okay so we'll do three players four players and five players and we'll go through the mathematics and we usually have a little calculator beside us to do to confirm because in this alternate version of monopoly we end up not having too much cash float around so sometimes people end up going bankrupt by by one dollar being short one dollar or five dollars or ten dollars right so even railroad cards can bankrupt someone and it becomes pretty intense once you once you see how the game is played okay so with three cards and let's roll the dice to see who gets the first card okay so the car is gonna roll they roll two usually the highest gets the first card right a 10 and I'm gonna roll I'm gonna get a five so the first card goes to the boat and the other people who aren't getting the first card one person ends up usually cutting it and the other end person ends up usually dealing it right so we cut it so the first person first card that the boat get gets is Atlantic Avenue right and then I get Tennessee Boop. BNO Pennsylvania Pennsylvania the green ones and the green ones end up being extremely expensive in this game you really don't want to get very many of the expensive cars because the float doesn't end up being that much and the expensive cars we end up having to pay the funds right and tennis st james vermont virginia illinois shoreline baltic ventnor mediterranean boardwalk right so five 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 right Oriental, Waterworks, Indiana, Pacific, North Carolina, uh, States Avenue, Marvin Garvin. This person already has a monopoly, right? New York. Oh, this person ends up getting a monopoly too. Boardwalk and Park Place. And there's four cars left, right? We deal them out. Reading. Connecticut electric and there's one card that's going to be put on the side and during the game whoever lands on it can buy it okay so basically this is what we have right now and the way it works with three players there is seven thousand five hundred dollars total float on the board so each person gets two thousand five hundred dollars right two thousand five hundred two thousand five hundred two thousand five hundred and what you end up doing once the cards are dealt you flip these things over and you count the mortgage value of these properties and you multiply them by two so basically what you're doing is you're counting up the value of the properties and since each person gets two thousand five hundred dollars all you do is you subtract what the total property value is from the two thousand five hundred dollars right so you're paying for your properties so let's go through this exercise to add these up okay and what you end up doing let me put these guys over here basically for me this person has a monopoly that person has a monopoly so they can shut me out because what we end up doing we make deals but uh, we've gone through the rules of the whole thing uh, how the gameplay goes in that video right so for now let's just do some simple math calculations hopefully you can see the mortgage property of these things right so usually you flip these things over and you try to group things together so the calculation ends up being easier right so here's shoreline which is 100 usually you try to do the hundreds right so here's 100 here's new york mortgage value is 100 the property value is 200 right so here's 200 dollars I'm going to take North Carolina, which is $150 mortgage value, 
and Vermont, which is $50 mortgage value, put them together and that's $200. So right now there's $400 value here, right? Let's group more of them together. We have, we have, take a look at this. Here, let's do this one and this one. So 90 plus 60, so 60 is Connecticut, 90 uh, is Tennessee. So put 90 and 60 together, that's 150, right? Take Pennsylvania with this. So 150 and 160, right? So if you want to do simple calculations, you would go, this is 150, take 150 of this, that makes it 300, add another $10, that makes it $310. Take the $30, actually, let's do it this way. So that's $310, right? Here is grouping these things together. That's Mediterranean is worth $30. Waterworks is worth 75, so that's $105, right? $310 and $105. That ends up being $415, right? So $415, and we had $400 here. $415 plus $400 is $815. Multiply that by two, okay? So $815 multiplied by two, you end up getting $800 multiplied by 2 is $1,600. $15 multiplied by 2 is $30. $1,600 plus $30 is $1,630, right? So let's put that on paper so you see how the calculation works out, right? So we have $815. Multiply that by 2. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 16. So we have $1,630 in property value that we have to pay for, right? What we have now is each person gets $2,500. So subtract that from 1630, right? Or $1,630 subtracted from 2500. So that becomes a four, that becomes a nine, that becomes a 10, right? Oops, we don't need the 10 there. So that becomes a, that becomes a 10. Right? So this becomes zero, that becomes seven, this becomes one, this becomes 14, that becomes eight. So I end up keeping $870, right? So instead of dealing out $2,500 per person, we just do this calculation, mental calculation, pen and paper, or with a calculator, and I just end up getting $870 to start with, right? So here's 500. Here's $830. And usually we do deal out fives and ones. Okay, so let's do it that way. That way we do have a float just the way you see it. So that was 100 going back. Here's another 100. So that's 800 and we want $30, right? One, two, 25, one, two, three, four, and five, All right? So that's $830 for me and I get these properties. Let's put this on the side. Let's figure out what the total is for this person, okay? For the boat, let's see what we got. The boat's got some, the yellow properties are expensive to build on, so they might need money. We might be able to make them a deal, give them money to get a property, but we'll see how that plays out, right? Let's just do the mathematics of it for now. So we lay this out and we're gonna group things together again, right? We got Oriental and Pacific. Pacific, the green, is $150 mortgaged. Oriental, the light blue, is $50. So 150 plus 50 is 200. We have Pennsylvania Railroad, so that's 300. We got Reading Railroad, that's 400. What else we have? What else can we group together? Now take a look at this, I like this grouping. So we have Vermont, Marvin Gardens, and Atlantic Avenue. All four railroads, right? 130, 140, and 130, right? So if you take a look at this, what you can do is count up the hundreds, that ends up being 300. And then 30 plus 40 is 70, plus 30 is another 100. So the yellows mortgage value is $400, 
right? One, two, three, and the leftover is another 100. That's 400. So we had 400 here. We had 500, 600, and 200 here. That's $800 so far, right? And then we have Illinois, which is 120, and St. James, which is 90. So that's $210. So this person, the boat, has a total of $1,010 that they have to pay, right? On mortgage value, right? So you double that. Let's bring out our pen and paper, right? So we had $1,010, agreed? That was 800 plus 210 is $1,010. Multiply that by two, zero, two, zero, two. So that's $2,020 this person has to pay for their properties, right? $2,020. So take 2,500, subtract $2,020, zero, four, 10, eight, four, zero. So they get $480 in float right so one two three hundred three fifty four hundred right one two three four hundred and eighty dollars so I'm gonna do five twenty and I'm just gonna grab a five and two one or five ones right and one more one and that's the float that the boat gets with the properties and then once we do the calculation for the next one we'll lay out the cards to see what's uh, what each person end up getting and how this game might play out okay so the car has this let's lay it all out and usually it's fantastic just laying it all out because you see the pattern you can see what you can group together to make your calculations a lot easier right states avenue and baltic mortgage value is 70 and 30 so that's 100 dollars bno is 100 so that's 200 dollars boardwalk is 200 so that's 400 dollars right check out this combination we have two reds and a virginia right so 110 110 mortgage value and 80 100 from here and 100 here from here that makes 200 the 10 and the 10 makes 20 plus 80 that's another 100 so these three make 300 dollars right so we had 300 plus boardwalk was 200 that's 500 600 700 dollars so far and then this grouping is good too electric company and park place park place is 175 electric company is 75 that makes it 250 right 250 I forgot how much this was 250 here is 300 and 400 and another 300 so that was 300 400 500 600 700 and plus 250 is 950 you multiply that by 2 right let's do it on paper 950 multiplied by 2 is $1,900, right? Let's do that calculation here. So you see what's going on. So we got $950 times 2, 0, 10, 1, 18, 19. And we take 2,500, subtract from 1,900. 0, 0, take 1 from here, 15. And we have, you know, I have videos out there for the language of mathematics where we do these simple calculations right how you do addition subtraction multiplication and division right so if you need to know how to do just simple addition subtraction and stuff like this take a look at those videos they're good they're quick they're rapid they're not asmr they're sort of urban graffiti style mathematics doing them in the city on the walls right but they are good little videos to teach you how to do this rapidly right so the car ends up getting six hundred dollars float right so let's do one two three four five five fifty and and you need fives and ones one two three four 
five, right? And what I would do is usually break this down to two tens as well. One of the uh, members in our gaming group uh, is a very good banker. He's a, he used to work as a dealer in a casino, so he knows how to do the calculations super rapid, right? And he's usually the first one who's got, all, who's got the things calculated, and I'm usually the second one that has the things calculated, right? So this is how much the car gets, right? So let's lay out these things and group them together to see how each person has fared in this shuffle in this deal right and the cheap properties these things are valuable because they're easy to build on usually these cheap properties end up being quite valuable as is boardwalk and park place right and you got this guy so this is the boat and they ended up having six hundred dollars float okay money matters in this game All right. so that's a six hundred dollar float let's see how much the boat and don't forget this is still up to be bought which is st charles right so let's put that there for now the boat ended up getting how much did the boat get 480 dollars not much money however they got the yellows as a monopoly which is pretty sweet they got two railroads which is not bad and the rest of the stuff is just usually blockers, right? It prevents, if you already have a monopoly, it prevents other people from acquiring these monopolies, right? So let's put these guys here. And here's this float, okay? And me, I ended up getting not the best shuffle, not the best combinations, right? I ended up getting two greens, which is very expensive, that usually nobody has, nobody wants. The two light blues, they're good. This one is good. This is good. This is not bad. Boardwalk, uh, Waterworks and Electric Company end up actually being valuable properties. Okay. Let's move these guys here a little bit. Give ourselves a little room. And these are amazing. If I had this Monopoly, I'd be sitting pretty, right? And I ended up getting $870. Now, usually, if one person gets a monopoly, the other people end up trying to make deals to get themselves monopolies, right? But these two people, players, have monopolies, I don't. So I would have to make them an extremely sweet deal to be able to get my hands on a monopoly. And for me, who can I make a deal with? I have this trade with this person, and I have these two trades, these three trades that I can make with the boat, right? And I have the railroads. The railroads are very, very uh, desirable properties in this game because if you're able to get all four, you get $200 a pop. The chance card has two cards in it, which says go to the nearest railroad and pay twice as much. So that ends up being $400 a pop, right? Even having three monopolies, three railroads is good in this game because you're getting a hundred dollars a pop right so what we end up doing is this person probably will not want to make a deal unless someone's giving them extremely good incentive to make a deal the car has the has a float of six hundred dollars and this person with the yellows has a float of four hundred and eighty dollars the yellows cost 450 to build one house a pop these guys call cost 400 to build one house a pop and as soon as you have two houses a pop you're getting paid well the yellows two houses a pop is getting paid 300 360 dollars so it's not a hard hit for someone to land there so for me what i could do is make a deal with this person because i have three properties that i could make a deal with these guys have one railroad a uh, one yellow that one red that they could make a deal with and this person have basically one railroad they could give up for this person right so if i was these guys i wouldn't make any deals if i was this person they have six hundred dollars float and if they mortgage these guys that'll give them eight hundred dollars that'll give them two properties here to be the killer for boardwalk on park place three houses in each will take out anyone in this game usually right so that ends up being the killer 
so I could possibly make a deal with this person to get the light blue Baltic and maybe make him an offer of start playing these two people against each other right I could say you know what I'll give you I'd be willing to give them elect waterworks and if you have both of these properties electric company and waterworks is 10 times whatever you land here and that's good money really in this game that's good money so I could say I'll give you waterworks and I'll give you three hundred dollars right if they give me if they give me Baltic Avenue right if I was them I wouldn't take that deal but that's the deal I would start off with I would try to milk me for more money I would say give me five hundred dollars right as soon as they make that offer I would turn to this person and say listen I'll give you five hundred dollars okay plus a railroad for this guy and this is really what I want okay this person they need the money because they need to build on the yellows they might take my offer they might not they'll try to milk me for more too but if they try to milk me for more I'll turn to that person and make them the same offer again if they talk to each other they decide to shut me out I have to wait to see which one of them will get in trouble first before I get into trouble right and then I'll make them an offer to buy their properties right so the game plays out in a certain way where it becomes a little bit unpredictable but just because you don't have a monopoly right off the bat don't worry about it too much right you should try to make a deal right off the bat because you might end up landing in someone's property and lose your money and have to mortgage things right but if I end up getting a monopoly right now right off the bat I'm sitting pretty even though I'm gonna give up a fair bit of money the reason is in mortgage value I have three hundred and ten dollars locked up here so my purpose is to get these cheap guys so I can build on them right away okay so that's the way it plays out that's the way this shuffle has played out right let's do the same mental math calculation for four players okay and with four players what ends up happening is a card is not left out all the cards end up being dealt right and keep in mind this person can land in St. Charles place have the opportunity to buy this and they have another monopoly if that happens this person will be more inclined to make a deal with me that way maybe they'll say hey I'll give you this if I give them these guys right this person would step in so one way I could play this as well is to make one of these players a very very sweet deal to show the table to show these guys that I'm willing to do anything to get my hands on a monopoly so what will happen is if I make a very sweet deal to this person then this person might step in and lower what they wanted from me right or vice versa if I make a sweet deal to this person and say I'll give you these guys plus railroad to get this one that's a pretty sweet deal this guy might take me up on that offer he might say give me two hundred dollars on top of that right if that happens this person might step in and say hey I'll give you this just give me three hundred dollars four hundred dollars whatever they need to be able to build three houses a pop here right to step in to act as a blocker preventing this deal from going through right so you can play the other players against each other if you're not sitting pretty but you do have money and you do have properties that people are looking for right so let's shuffle these guys and bring out a fourth player and let's bring out the shoe as the fourth player okay the monies we'll just leave out here okay we'll just leave them out here and put them back once we finish right because we have a fair bit of money flowed here this is monopoly money from 
two different Monopoly games, right? Over the years we've had where if you play Monopoly enough, you know, the money gets torn and some of the cards get torn and stuff like this. And you end up, uh, you end up replacing the money or putting monies together, right? So that's a, you know, straight up shuffle. Okay. And let's put these in order and we'll do a deal. So with four players playing, all the cards end up being dealt out. Okay. Oh, one thing I should have shown you guys. Let me show you this as well. Okay. Because this is something that we end up doing. Now, four to three players. Let's bring out this thing. Let's bring this out. Right. So four to three players. And this is what we're going to do just to confirm all the calculations are done correctly. Because each person does their own calculations and we check. Right. To make sure that the float is okay. Right. No one's got too much money or no one's got you know hasn't received enough money now the total properties they're worth and this is for sure you must do this okay because usually if we you know in a, in a game night when we sit down and we play this game you know we play anywhere between if we're playing let's say average of six hours we can play anywhere between five the 10 games in a or eight games in a six hour period of monopoly right which is fantastic and we have another alternate version that we play that i will make a video for to show you how that auction monopoly game plays as well but and this is what we end up doing to make sure everybody did their calculations correctly right because we usually don't use pen and paper we usually just try to do it in our heads and then we double check right so all the property together on a monopoly board is worth five thousand nine hundred dollars okay so and with three players when we have three players with these guys right with three players we have seven thousand five hundred dollars float right and we had st charles sitting out and i'll show you how that plays into the game as well so we have seven thousand five hundred dollars float right you subtract out and you can look at the table that we've provided uh, for you to figure out you know what the numbers are right so total property value here let's use another now nah, let's use this because all the numbers are here right this is what we're interested in this is what we're interested in and that's what we're interested in right so total properties properties are worth five thousand six hundred and ninety dollars that's an important number St. Charles is worth, St. Charles is worth $140. Okay, that's an important value as well that we're going to use. So what we end up doing is going, we start off with $7,500. You subtract out $5,690. $5,690. That gives you, if you can see that, $1,810. Now, that's the total property value that we had, $5,690, right? However, St. Charles was not accounted for, right? It wasn't part of the float that the money that people paid. So we have to add that value to the total that we have right now, right? Because we subtracted it out, now we're going to add it back in. So we're going to go plus, plus, right? one hundred and forty dollars which is one thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars and now what we end up doing is we take these values this this and this and subtract it from this and the total should be zero if it all works out then if we end up getting zero here then all the calculations were done correctly so let's do this minus eight hundred and seventy dollars eight hundred and seventy dollars equals one thousand eighty dollars minus four hundred and eighty dollars and if we subtract that that should give us six hundred dollars remaining right minus four hundred and eighty dollars and that's six hundred dollars remaining and now we know everybody did their calculations correctly and we can start the game and the way we start the game is someone usually well we end up rolling the dice to see who goes first and going first in this game is very important because as we talked about in that video where i went over the rules 
You can't build on any properties until you pass go. Land on go or pass go, right? So everybody's trying to get to go first, okay? Now, let's do the same thing with four players. And with four players, all the money ends up being, uh, all the cards end up being dealt out, right? And this is, you know, we did the shuffle. It's all mixed up. Let's do one more shuffle this way. Okay, oops. One more shuffle this way. Do a couple of flips this way. All right. Okay, we put the cards in the middle. Oh, let's put me here. Let's put it like this. We have four players, okay? We roll to see who gets the first card. Three, four, nine, and I roll and I get a five. So this person goes first. If you end up getting the same highest roll, you roll again to see who gets the higher one. So, you know, uh, face off between whoever got the highest equal rolls, right? So this person gets the first card, one person cuts, and the same person, another person can deal. Right? St. Charles, and we always go clockwise. Connecticut, North Carolina, Marvin Gardens, Waterworks, Green, Connecticut, Illinois, New York, Boardwalk, Virginia, Shoreline, Vermont, Ventnor, Park Place, Oh, yellow. Oh, I have the yellow here. Usually when people get close to getting a monopoly, they start trying to call out for the card, right? A green, States Avenue. It's much harder to get a set with four people right off the bat than it is with three. I'll take reading, Oop. Tennessee, Indiana, St. James, Oriental and Pennsylvania right and we started here so we have to end here and that ends no more cards right so let's do the calculations let's put these things on the side let's do our mental calculations and these mental calculations towards the end of the night people start making more and more mistakes right so it's important to do double check things okay let's lay these out and these are my my uh, my cards so what i'm going to do i'm going to free up another piece of paper that way we can do our you know confirm our calculations right so what do we have let's group things together we have we have check this out this is a nice grouping actually take a look at this kentucky is 110 mortgage value st james is 90 so that's 200 dollars boardwalk is 200 dollars right so that's four hundred dollars we have states avenue and mediterranean that's 70 and 30 that's a hundred dollars so we had 400 so far so this is 500 500 dollars we got pacific and ventnor 500 600 700 and the change makes 80 so that's 780 dollars right how much my property is worth seven hundred and eighty dollars and we multiply that by two right so seven hundred and eighty dollars times two zero six one fourteen fifteen fifteen sixty now when you're playing with four people the total float we have is eight thousand dollars because there's four people playing we kick up the float right because this is divvied up between four people so each person gets two thousand dollars right remember for three people each the total was seven thousand five hundred that we provided as float for the whole table and each person got two thousand five hundred with four people there's eight thousand dollar float for the whole table and divvy that up between four people you end up getting two thousand dollars per person so the float per person decreases right but so does the number of properties you get right so the money sort of stays around the same range of how much money you end up getting maybe a little bit less right so i have two thousand dollar float my properties cost 
fifteen hundred dollars fifteen hundred sixty dollars one thousand five hundred sixty dollars so we subtract that from here zero one nine ten four four so I end up getting four hundred forty dollars okay so four hundred one two three three fifty oops four hundred and forty dollars so we're just gonna go 20 and two one ten and one two three four five so that's four hundred and forty dollars for me and where's my horsey there's my horsey right let's put this guy over here put it out of the way so we can lay the cards off for the rest of the people and do the calculations let's bring the boat over here let's see what the boat ended up getting how much they gotta pay for their properties right so what have we got what type of grouping were we gonna do what type of grouping are we gonna do we got 175 70 50 160 75 and 110 so 100 is 100 that's legit we got two 75s and a 50 right 275s make 150 and 50 makes 200 so 200 plus 100 that's 300 okay we have take a look at this 160 and 110 so 100 from here and 100 from here makes 200 60 plus 10 that's makes 70 that's 270 i'm going to add the 70 here 270 plus 70 is 340 so this is 340 this is 100 is 440 and 200 makes it 640 so the boat is 640 dollars right 640 dollars remember we're not using pen and paper usually so 640 dollars multiply that by two 640 600 times two is 1200 40 times two is 80 so that's 1280 dollars right you got to subtract that from 2000 so if you round 12 1260 1280 dollars to i hope it was 1280 1280 dollars to three 1300 that's 700 dollars and you add another 20 for the 800 dollars i hope that was what it was oh it was 40 it wasn't my mistake so 100 200 that's 300 four five six forty so taking 40 to 100 that's 60 dollars so that's 760 dollars the boat should get right hopefully i explained that properly but we'll do it with pen and paper as well so you see so we had 640 dollars times two you get zero eight twelve right subtract that from two thousand one two eight zero right so zero from zero zero eight from zero you can't take you borrow from here this comes to ten and then becomes nine right and this becomes ten so that's two and that's seven seven hundred and twenty dollars was it six hundred forty dollars it was six hundred forty dollars so seven hundred and twenty dollars my original calculation was correct i ended up confusing myself right so 720 dollars which is something that happens that's why we have the calculator on the side where we double check everything right so 720 dollars let's just do this like the 720 dollars the boat gets right remember if you're doing this in the game provide dollars fives and tens for the players because you can't build any houses until you move until you get to go or past it right one round you must travel however collecting rent becomes important you can collect rent on your properties and you need change to be able to pay your rent right let's see what the car has bno pennsylvania shoreline three railroads this person is sitting very very pretty right now okay if they can get their hands on the fourth railroad and one monopoly they're sitting sweet 
So that's three hundred dollars. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's put these guys together. All right. That's three hundred dollars. Here's one forty, one twenty, and one thirty. Right. That's three hundred. If you take the hundreds, the change from each forty plus twenty is sixty plus thirty is ninety. Right. So that's three hundred ninety dollars. And here's ninety. So that makes it four hundred and eighty dollars. Four hundred eighty dollars plus three hundred. That's seven hundred eighty dollars. Right. Multiplied by two. Seven hundred eighty multiplied by two. Seven hundred fifty multiplied by two is fifteen hundred. So this was seven hundred eighty dollars. So we have thirty dollars left over. Thirty times two is sixty dollars. So this is fifteen hundred and sixty dollars. You got to subtract that from two thousand. So fifteen hundred and sixty dollars ends up subtracted from two thousand ends up being four hundred and forty dollars. But let's do the calculation on paper so we can confirm it, right? So this was seven hundred and eighty dollars, I believe. We said three hundred dollars for the railroads, and all of these guys were one, two, three, three eighty plus this is four. Uh, sorry, three ninety plus ninety is four eighty. Four eighty plus three hundred is seven eighty. Seven eighty times two, right? Zero sixteen one. 14 15 60 minus that from 2000 right minus that from 2000 0 0 borrow one from here that becomes a 10 oh i forgot the six this is a six not a zero make this a nine make that a 10 right that becomes four and that becomes four so 440 dollars the car is getting one two three four and forty okay four hundred forty dollars put that guy there let's do the calculation oops that's the car not the shoe let's do the calculation for the shoe okay wow the shoe is not gonna oh look at this they got serious cheap properties but then they had two expensive ones right the cheap properties would have been nice to have and the expensive ones are going to be expensive right so we have check this out we have 150 and 50 right that makes 200 reading railroad makes 300 so that's 300 right there and then what do we got we got 80 plus 30 that's 110 dollars okay with 175 for park place that's 110 plus 100 that's 210 plus 75 is 285 plus 60. so 85 plus 60 is 145 right so 140 i'm sorry 135 right 70 plus 60 is 30 130 so 135 plus and oh yeah we have the 10 from here so 145 plus one two two three hundred and forty five right let's do that again i confuse myself that's what happens sometimes right 110 plus 175 that's 285 so 345 345 plus 300 that's 645 645 times two so 650 times 2 is going to be 1300 and you subtract 10 from that is 290 dollars so you're going to have 710 dollars if you subtract that from 2710 dollars for the shoe but let's confirm that so out of all that calculation what did we have 645 i gotta do it again once you go past a certain stage you i end up losing track right that was 300 that's 110 that's 285 345 so 6 645 so 645 times 2 0 1 8 9 12 so 2000 subtract 1290 1 9 10 so that becomes 1 7 
No, it can't be one. Yeah. So zero, one, seven hundred and ten dollars. Zero, one, seven, right? So seven hundred and ten dollars for the shoe. Five, six, seven, and ten dollars for the shoe. And the shoe's got all those properties. Let's lay this out just to see uh, what each person got, right? Let's put me here because that's closest to me, the horse. I like being the horse. Okay. This is what I ended up having. Not bad. The properties are sweet. Okay. The properties are nice. Let's see what the car ended up getting. And sometimes we have to make deals two ways, three ways, four ways, whatever you need to do to make your deal. This person's sitting pretty. All they need is a yellow, right? This person, well, let's see what the rest of them end up being, right? And one thing we do say, just because one person is the banker, we end up saying you can't make any deals or propose any deals until, until the banker has done all the calculations and we know everything's correct oh yeah let's lay this out and do do the check as well just to make sure everything's okay okay we always do the check for some reason i'm forgetting to do it right now just because i'm getting excited on all the cards it's a lot you know it's a lot of fun just checking this out right so let's do this and if there's any discrepancy five dollars ten dollars doesn't make a difference what the discrepancy is we do a recount okay sometimes a person says oh i know i made a mistake and they'll do the calculation and they'll figure it out but usually we end up doing the whole thing again so again we start off with the total float eight thousand dollars so we punch that into the calculator eight thousand dollars we subtract out the total property value for the board, which is $5,690. So minus, right? Let me show you this. Minus $5,690. So this should be $2,310 in float, okay? All of these added up should add up to that, okay? So let's do this. Let's subtract these out. So $2,310 minus 440 minus 720 minus 440 and that should give us 710 dollars right and that gives us 710 dollars sweet we did the calculations correctly the game can proceed right and how would the deals work out here this person needs that Aside from that, the only two solo deals are these guys here. So me and this person can make a deal, okay? If they're really wanting Boardwalk and Park Place, I'm willing to give them this, right? As long as they give me this, at least, plus these two, okay? I would try to get them to throw in the railroad because that way I can make a deal with this person but they probably won't throw in the rare railroad. If somebody has three railroads and you control one, you have power, okay? You have power. This person might try to get that railroad from them by getting a monopoly and trading them for a lower monopoly, something that's not as desirable just to get the fourth railroad, but this person would be a fool to give up that railroad to this person, right? So I have a deal here that I could make with that person, but I would require a fair bit to give them this. Or the person might be willing to take this and give me that, and they would require a fair bit from me, right? They have this deal going on here, but they would have to include me in because us three can make green monopolies, right? We could make this and this and this one. So us three have one, two, three, four, five monopolies we can make. This person needs to get in the game. They need to make a deal. I hope you see how this plays out, right? It becomes tricky. Sometimes people get shut out and they have to sort of wait and 
they become desperate and they start selling their properties and other people step in trying to act as blockers some people require money if they don't have as much money right so for example seven hundred and ten dollars four hundred and forty dollars that's a big difference right that's a little that's close to three hundred dollar different that's two hundred and seventy dollar different that's a fair bit in this game okay that's a fair bit in this game and this person will do anything they can to get their hands on that railroad and they do need a monopoly they need a monopoly okay let's do this for five people let's shuffle these guys let's bring out our people here let's put the money on the side again here we'll just do it this way okay because we have a lot of money on in the bank from having two different monies from two different boards in there right let me take a look at this right take a look at how beat up these guys are compared to these guys right let's make this up usually we do it from the mortgage value side right so you don't see what's being mixed together right it's not as easy to see it anyway okay and let's bring them together level everything off and this is fantastic mental calculation mental mathematics if you want to practice math and there's a lot of mathematics involved in this game in the gameplay when once you start going around the board because it's this game and the auction game that we play is really about money management, right? Money management is huge, huge, huge in this game. Let's do, let's bring which one? The hat, the iron, the cannon, or the wheelbarrow? Let's put the hat in the game, okay? So we roll to see who gets the first card. Seven, six six seven oh the for us the dice always have to land on the board if they land on the cards it's still okay if they land on money it's still okay but they have to land on the perimeter within this zone right so 10 so i end up getting the first card okay so someone cuts and we deal it out let's see what we end up getting and for this game for five people we kick the float up to 8,500. So each person gets 1,700. And what ends up happening is three cards, three property cards stay outside. And that ends up sometimes becoming important. Okay. Yellow, light blue, yellow. Ooh, that's nice. Too bad that's already out and oh if you could make that that would be very sweet indeed electric company indiana st charles oh we have a straight deal take a look at this that's pretty sweet and i get the card and there isn't enough cards to go around so this is what's left over okay property that's left over that no one has the bank has and it's two railroads so wow 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 the railroads aren't going to come into the deals very much so let's fold these up let's take a quick look to see what's here me and this person are sitting pretty sweet we could make a deal straight up and for me i'd be willing to take the light blues for giving up these ones because the light blue is very cheap to build on the, the houses here are 50 bucks a pop these are 100 bucks a pop I might require one other piece from them. They might not give it up. They might say, I give them a piece and they'll take the blue and they'll give me that one. Maybe they'll say, give me the value difference, right? So let's do the calculations here and see how much each person is getting money-wise and how much they owe. So you can see how much float is about, right? As you can tell, now we only have five properties each, right? Big difference, big difference. 
let's see, North Carolina and Vermont, right? 150 plus 50, that's 200. 290 plus 60 is 150 plus 80 that's 230 230 plus 200 is 430 right 430 multiplied by 2 that's 860 subtract that from 1700 860 so let's say if it was 800 that would be 900 subtract another 60 that's 840 dollars right let's do the calculation that would be my mental calculation but let's do it again so i forgot how much it was 840 dollars i believe right let's see that's 200 200 plus 150 plus 80 so that's 230 so 430 becomes 860 dollars right so eight hundred and sixty dollars times two and remember for this game there's eight thousand five hundred dollars float total and there's seventeen hundred dollars per person okay multiply by two is zero twelve one sixteen uh oh no i've already multiplied by two this is four hundred and four hundred and thirty dollars multiplied by two is zero six 860 we subtract that from 1700 zero borrow one from here that's 16 that becomes a 10 so that's four and that becomes 16 that's 840 dollars float for the horse which is me I'll put the 100 there 840 dollars five here let's put the actually we can use that 200 300 remember this is the thing but we because we're gone through the light hundreds so this is a hundred as well so eight hundred and forty dollars right eight hundred and forty dollars here and then we have here let's highlight this because we're gonna do our calculation to make sure everything's correct okay let's see what the hat what the hat got Oof, that's going to be expensive i think right so boardwalk and shoreline that's 300 dollars. okay here's 140 and 120 that's 260 plus 30 that's 290 dollars right 290 dollars and 300 that's 590 dollars multiplied by two 500 multiplied by 2 is a thousand 90 multiplied by 2 is 180 so it's 1180 dollars right so that's 1180 dollars right but let's do let's do the times two let's figure out what it was just so we know we're doing it correctly so that's 300 400 500 590 dollars right five hundred ninety dollars five ninety times two zero eight one ten eleven so one seven zero zero minus one thousand one hundred eighty dollars zero borrow one from here ten two five uh five hundred twenty dollars oh five hundred twenty dollars that's right I don't know I can't remember if I did that mentally or not so $520 so here's $520 let's make it simple right because the gameplay we've already gone through and we're not gonna go around the board yet for our game right at some point we might I'm trying to get my gaming group to come over here for us to do a marathon gaming night right that would be sweet or a gaming weekend so Here's 130 plus 70. That's 200. Here's another 100. That's 300 for New York, right? 300. And we have 50 plus 70. That's 120, right? So 120 plus 300. That's 420. Multiply that by 2. 420 times 2 
is 840. So we don't have to do that double multiplication, right? We can just go 1700 zero, zero, minus 840, right? So was that 840? Let's do it again. I look at so many numbers, I forget, right? So 120, 220 plus 200, 420 times 2 is 840, right? So subtract 0, borrow 1 from here, that becomes a 10. 6, borrow 1 from here, $860 here for the shoe. 5, 1, 2, 3, and 60, right? That's not bad. Ralph, of this person, it's... $340 more than this person got. That's a lot of money in this game. That's a lot of money in this game. Right? Let's do this guy. Let's do the boat. Let's open it up. So, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Let's do it this way. Here's 175 and 75. So, that's $250 there. Right? $250, and then let's do these three together. 110, 130, and 30. So take the 100 from both those, so that's $200, and take the change left over. 10 plus 30 is 40, plus 30 is 70. So that's $270 plus $250, right? So 250 plus 250 is 500, and there's $20 left over from the 70, so that's $520. Multiplied by that by 2 is $1,040. Okay. So $1,040. So $1,700 minus $1,040. Hopefully we did that correctly. Right. Let's check it again, just to make sure. So... 250, 350, 450 plus 450 plus 70. Okay, 10, 30, and 30. 70, 450 plus 70, that's 520. 520 times 2 is 1040. Subtract this, 0, 6, 10, 6, 6, 660 dollars. Right? Six hundred and sixty dollars. The boat gets right. Let's put this here. Let's do the calculation for the car. Okay, the car calculation. Let's see what the car ended up getting. Oh, this guy is this guy's, I think. Yeah, Baltic is this person's. Everyone should have five cards. Right? Let's flip these guys over. What do we got? This is easy. 110 plus 90, that's $200. Plus 100, that's $300. Plus 104, 160, 300, that's $460. Plus 75, right? 60 plus 75 is 135, right? So what did we have? 200, 300, 400 plus 135. 535 multiplied that by 2 is $1,070 right one thousand seventy dollars minus one thousand seventy dollars right so zero six ten three and six six hundred and thirty dollars this person gets okay so let's do this six hundred and thirty dollars for this person for the car that's how much the car gets, $630. That's not bad. Okay. Now, for us to make sure everything worked out correctly, remember, we had $8,500 float. Okay, that's what we start off with. So if we want, we're going to, I'll lay it out here so you see exactly what it is that we're doing. So $8,500 float. We're going to subtract out $5,690. That's the total property value, right? However, these guys are not in the game yet because people can land on them and buy them. So we have to add the total value here. The total value here is 200 plus 200. Pacific is 300. So that's 
plus 500 okay and whatever we get has to add up to these five here all right so let's do this 8500 8500 plus 5690 5690 sorry not plus it should be minus 8500 minus 5690 5690 equals that and then we're going to add 500 plus 500 equals that three thousand three hundred and ten dollars now we start subtracting these so minus 840 right minus 520 minus 660 minus 860 and what it should give us is 630 minus 860 and we have 430 hmm. we did a miscalculation somewhere there is $200 miscalculation right so where did we do the miscalculation <laughs> let's see that's 300 those are 200 a pop that's 500 so that's correct that's correct 8500 float is correct minus we did that correct so now we have to go back and try to figure out what we did wrong right oops okay so the odds are one place we had extra $100 so my guess is because we multiplied it by two so let's take a look at this which one if we lay these out so we have to find in the calculations a hundred dollars that was miscalculated right let's see what this person ended up having that person we said had six hundred and thirty dollars return right so let's see that's two hundred three hundred four hundred five hundred and 35 535 times 2 is $1,700 that is correct okay let me let me show you guys this here okay so that's correct $1,070 okay so this guy is correct right now anyway let's see this person park place hmm, maybe maybe the mistake is here we'll see that's 250 250 350 450 500 and 450 520 times 2 is $1040 that is correct okay let's check out this one should this be more hmm. let's check it out This guy was cheap. That's 200, 300, 420 dollars times two is 840 dollars. That is correct. Okay. Let's check it out. This person. Boardwalk shoreline. That's 300 dollars, 400 dollars, 500 dollars. Five hundred and sixty five hundred ninety dollars five hundred ninety dollars times two five hundred ninety dollars times two five ninety times two let's do this here five ninety well that is correct five ninety times two zero eight one 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 zero that's what we have here so that is correct so the odds are maybe it was my mistake right here we'll see let's check it out so 150 plus 50 that's 200 dollars plus 150 that's 350 dollars 350 dollars plus 80 dollars is 400 and 300 430 dollars that's 
$860. That is correct. So it might have been the me punching in the numbers incorrectly, right? So let's add these guys up, right? What should our return be here? 8500 minus 5690, right? Plus 500, plus 500 equals $3,310, right? So what we're going to do is subtract these totals from that. So again, minus 840 minus 520 minus 860 minus 660 minus, it should be $430. So there's a miscalculation somewhere. Where is the miscalculation? Five. Eight. Eight. Three. Six. Hmm. Okay. Calculator comes out. Let's do it again. So when we reach this stage, if things aren't working out, we add up these things together with the calculator, right? So I'm going to add these guys up. 150, 150 plus 50 plus 90 plus 60. Oops, I keep on pressing the equal sign. Right? So 150, 150 plus 50 plus 90 plus 60 plus 80 is $430 times 2. Oops, why in the world did it do that? 150 plus 50 plus 90 plus 60 plus 80 equals that. 430 times 2 equals 860 and then we're just going to subtract 1700 we get 840 dollars so this is correct right and you can tell 8500 divided by five players is 1700 dollars right that's what the float is so that's correct okay let's do the next one so let's flip these over And let's do this one. Hopefully we find our mistake sooner. Sometimes it takes this long. Sometimes we get stuck at this where the calculation doesn't work out. 100 plus 120, 100 plus 120 plus 200 plus 30 plus 140 equals 590 times 2 equals 1180 dollars minus 1700 equals 520 dollars this is correct okay that is correct let's do this one okay let's flip this guy over so we know that one we've already done we've got the correct calculation clear clear so take a look at this 130 plus 70 plus 100 plus 50 plus 70 that gives us 770 no that can't be it let's check this out 130 plus 70 plus 100 plus 50 plus 70 equals that times 2 is $840, right? So there's our $840 minus 1700 is $860. So this is correct as well. Okay. 
maybe I just punched something wrong with the calculator, right? Just to confirm. So that is correct. Let's do this one. One seventy five plus seventy five plus thirty plus one thirty plus one ten equals five hundred and twenty dollars times two equals one thousand forty dollars right here minus one seven zero zero equals six hundred and sixty dollars so that is correct okay let's check it out if all of these are correct then we probably punch something in incorrectly in the calculator right clear 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 75 plus 100 plus 160 plus 110 plus 90 equals 535 times 2 is $1,070 minus 1700 equals $630. That is correct. So that is correct. So all of these calculations were correct, right? Let's add them all up. Hopefully it adds up to this. Unless we misplaced the card somewhere in the shuffles. <laughs> we'll take a look at it, right? So make sure all the cards are accounted for. Maybe in the shuffles we lost the card, right? So let's see. 630 plus 660 plus 860 plus 520 plus 840 equals $3,510, right? There's a $200 discrepancy, which should be accounted for here, but it's not. So let's do this again. Let's check it out. Pacific. Yeah. So 8500. Oops. 8500 minus 5609 plus 500. Oh, it's not 500. Look at this, me being silly, eh? Look at this, look at this, the brain fart. That's $200 a pop. That's 400 plus 300. That's $700 right here, right? And that's what happens. Five zero. Okay. Did you guys catch it when I did it? I didn't catch it, right? That's $700 still left to buy right that accounts for the 200 and that ends up being the extra 200 okay two two four plus three seven hundred right that's where my mistake was cool and that's what you need to do if it doesn't work out because as we said we usually put something into the pot and whoever wins wins right uh could be favors as well okay so let's take a look at each one of these properties that's the fun factor too right to see what deals are possible let's take a look let's take a look let's take a look and this is what's left over right so a lot of these would have to be three four-way deals basically and when deals don't go through, when you have this many deals happening and it's complicated and whatnot, like these guys have good deals happening right here, right? So a deal for these two groups, the boat and the hat might be, this person gives this up and he gets everything else. So this person is doing a Hail Mary with this and how much money do they have? They have six hundred and fifty dollars which isn't bad that's enough to put you don't want to risk everything you might want to keep one property but maybe this person would be willing to give this up for those three properties and this person keeps that right that might be a good deal because if this happens right 
this person has a monopoly and they have the potential to grab this so maybe they'd be willing to take this and give up the rest of their cars three cars for the yellow and then this person can make a deal it's a sort of a progression right that's the way it might, might occur and this person would be happy because they have boardwalk and park place expensive to build on and they don't have very much mortgage value left over but they do have okay float right they might be willing to do that i would be willing to take this one instead of that deal that one for me would be a better deal to a certain degree how are all oh, these two guys have a deal straight out right so once these guys make a deal the other three players will have to make a deal right and these guys don't have to get the rest of the table involved so they could just do straight up deal like this this person gets this this for this or that for that right which one would i rather have depending on the float how much money does this person have this person has eight hundred dollars and this person probably has around eight hundred dollars too right they have even money so it's just a question of which one you prefer for me i prefer the light blue i think that's more powerful there's more probability of people landing in these ones so i would do a straight deal like this okay and i would be willing to take the other one as well if this person was really adamant he was really hardcore pushing for this what else is there what else is there and the rest of it these people would have to make a triple deal this person sort of stuck they don't have any single deals with anyone right so they would have to get in the game somehow okay and that's sort of the way we play and then after all the deals are done we roll to see who goes first right that's really important you don't roll to see who goes first first you roll to see who goes first after all the deals are done and there might not be deals being made you know these two might make a deal and these three might decide not to make a deal yet wait until a couple of or a couple of rounds is too late wait until how it plays out halfway through or something after a couple of rolls and then the pressure builds up and they have to make a deal right so that's the way we play this uh, this game the rapid monopoly game that we deal out the cars and it's fantastic and we do have another version of monopoly that we play which is an auction game and i will make a video of that as well to show you how the auction game is played it's sort of like a poker type of game and it's fantastic and it gets very stressful game and that game could be extremely rapid and the float for that game you end up sometimes having to mortgage property to buy property so the float for that game is a lot less like it's the same amount of money we start off with but because we're doing auction you're bidding for property usually properties go at, at a higher value right some of them go at a lower value but a lot of them initially go at a higher value then what ends up happening is there's very little money on the table right so you're penny anteing people and trying to win the game that way it's fantastic it's fantastic and deals can be made after the auction is done as well and we'll talk about that we'll talk about that okay i hope you enjoy it and i hope you have some fantastic games if you end up playing and uh, we'll definitely be doing more board game related uh, videos and for those of you who are asking for mental mathematics was a great way to teach adding subtracting multiplying and dividing uh, to to youth to kids this is a fantastic way to do it it's engaging it's fun and they get reward after it they get a they get to play monopoly and see how it plays out and if you play this way in a six hour period you could probably get in anywhere between four to eight games in a six hour period which is fantastic a lot of fun a lot of fun and it gives you a lot of math practice to be able to get good at adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing okay that's it for now and i'll see you guys in the next video